Hey guys, Coleman Collecting here. Today I wanted to give you guys a few shiny hunting tips since I've had some questions come up during my live streams while I've been doing my living dex hunts. So let's get right into it. The first thing that you'll want to do is always save before you go out and do your shiny hunts. Whether it's a massive mass outbreak or just go into a random map node to try to find something like an alpha shiny or something like that. Uh, what it'll let you do is scope out what's in the area, and if you don't find anything or you don't like what you find, you can go to another area and check it out. So this especially helps when you have multiple mass outbreaks or a couple massive outbreaks and maybe one mass outbreak. You can pick and choose which one's going to have the best stuff for you. My next tip is just about picking where to go when you load up into your map. A lot of times you'll have multiple outbreaks listed on your map, and it might be a little overwhelming to try to decide which place you want to go first. With me, I know I need a lot of different shinies, so any of these will work for me most of the time. But I find myself prioritizing regular outbreaks, which I know seems a little counterintuitive, but regular mass outbreaks actually have a higher shiny chance per Pokemon than you have in massive mass outbreaks. Now, the big benefit of massive mass outbreaks is each Pokemon has a 1 in 200-ish chance to be a shiny, but you get a lot more of them. In a regular mass outbreak, you might have more Pokemon in the outbreak, and they're all a specific Pokemon, but you're kind of stuck at those 1 in 100-ish chances for just that one Pokemon 12 times. Whereas over here, you have 1 in 200-ish chances, and you have 10 different nodes, so you end up seeing a lot more Pokemon. You have a higher chance of seeing a shiny in a massive mass outbreak overall. But if you needed a Pikachu, let's say, or a Raichu even, you could go to this node knowing that you have a pretty high chance of finding at least a shiny Pikachu on this. So that's usually how I'll prioritize these different nodes. So now that we've covered some of the basics, let's talk about a couple massive mass outbreak specific things. When you go over here and talk to Mai, you give her five Agua Berries and you can see what Pokemon are on the map. These Pokemon don't change, so if you are running low on Agua Berries, you can go here, talk to her, see what Pokemon are out here, and you could screenshot it or take a picture with your phone and reload after maybe you only get and you clear a handful of them you can reload this area, all of these Pokemon will stay in these areas. So you can go and check out every single node, even if you do run out of time. The next thing I want to talk about is the time limit that you have when you're in a massive mass outbreak. So when you're in a massive mass outbreak, you are being timed, I believe it's around 8 minutes that you have to clear the entire outbreak. Now, that seems like not a whole lot of time, but there are a couple things you can do to help kind of preserve the time that you have. Um, when you're in menus and you're in your home menu and everything, you're not actually burning time for the massive mass outbreak. And one other thing that I use a lot while I'm doing these massive mass outbreaks to save time is if there's an aggro Pokemon or even just any regular Pokemon, you can go to those nodes and you can battle the Pokemon. And it will not take any time from the massive mass outbreak while you're in that battle. So if you compare the time that it takes to catch four Pokemon from a massive mass outbreak and battle four, it ends up being a lot faster for the time perspective to just battle all of them. Even though it technically in real world time takes longer to beat all of these, you're actually not burning any time at all while you're doing this. Whereas when you're catching the Pokemon, you have to wait for each of the Pokeballs to shake. Hopefully you catch all four of them in one go, but a lot of times one will break out or two will break out. You'll have to chase them down and throw Pokeballs at them. So if you're really crunched for time and you'd like to check all of the nodes, this is something that I really recommend doing, is just beating all of the Pokemon one by one, and that'll just save you some time on the outbreak so you can clear everything in one go. When clearing out a massive mass outbreak node, I only ever clear out the first four Pokemon in the outbreak. A massive mass outbreak node can have anywhere between uh, six to ten Pokemon uh, in that ballpark, and 
clearing out the first four lets you see eight of the total Pokemon in that node without having to spend a whole lot of time on it. If I really wanted another, you know, a copy of the Pokemon from this node, I could go and I could clear the next four, but I might not get any more Pokemon to spawn after that. I might only get, the best case scenario would be I get a couple more. So your odds just start getting lower and lower after you beat those first four and you've seen the first eight of the node. So a lot of times I don't bother with going any further than that. But that's a good way to just kind of see a, a lot of Pokemon in a short amount of time and not have a whole lot of investment into it. Another little tip that I would always recommend is even if you don't need a certain Pokemon in a massive mass outbreak, like this Psyduck here, I don't need Psyduck or Golduck for my living decks anymore, but there are already four spawned in the world, so if there's another Pokemon in that vicinity and I'm not crunched for time, a lot of times I'll just fly by and see the first four of that Pokemon that are already spawned in. Sometimes you'll end up getting a nice free shiny out of it, and uh, it'll just be a bonus that you can trade to a friend or give away or something like that. So they're all already here. You might as well just take a look if you've already gone through everything else. And you'll see when you follow the tips that I'm giving you today, you'll be able to get through every single one of these nodes with time to spare. Once you start getting a few of these Pokemon that you don't really need, you can fully clear quite a few of these nodes and not have to spend a whole lot of time and be down to the wire on the massive mass outbreak time limit. My next tip is just a general one. Once you've finished a massive mass outbreak or a regular outbreak, if you haven't found a shiny or something that you wanted to keep, uh, one thing you can do is just reset your game. Since we saved in town, you'll end up getting all of your resources back that you spent during that massive mass outbreak. And you don't have to commit to losing 50 jet balls, let's say, because you caught a whole bunch of things trying to find a shiny. This is a good way to help make it so you aren't spending a bunch of extra money, especially if you're having trouble getting your money kind of just stabilized. And once you get into the late game, you'll start building money up, but this is a nice little way to just conserve. My next tip is just about cycling the mass outbreaks that you have available to you at any given time. Uh, right now we have these three available to us, but if I didn't want anything or I've checked all three of these already and I know there's nothing that I really want to get, one option is just going to one of the other nodes, or any of these nodes really, loading in and then just leaving by going back to Jubilife immediately. But a lot of times that's a little bit of a wasted time that you could be using on something else. So one thing that I do a lot when I'm resetting is... I'll go into the Crimson Mirelands, I will look for shiny unknowns in the cave after you get that in the end game. Uh, you can also check for a shiny alpha, you can do a circle around a certain region, right, just to see if you get lucky with a random shiny. And you'd be surprised how many you find, especially once you get into the end game and you get the shiny charm, your shiny chances are really high. So that's going to be my next tip as well. My next tip seems really simple, but it's something that I think people don't really consider a lot. Massive mass outbreaks and regular mass outbreaks are not the only way to get shinies. Now they do give you really good chances of finding a shiny Pokemon, but they're not the only way, and especially once you have the shiny charm, you have really high chances of finding any Pokemon on the map as a shiny. It ends up being 1 in 816 for any random Pokemon once you have the shiny charm because you have the completed decks for every single Pokemon in the game. And if you have a perfected dex, it's even better than that. So just flying around while you have a shiny charm can net you some shinies in most maps. I mean, most of the time I will get one every couple maps just flying around as long as I'm just flying through every little area and looking around a lot. It might not be as targeted as a mass outbreak, but it's a good way to really get a collection of shinies going. And alongside that tip, the other thing that I'd really recommend is 
Say you're in a regular mass outbreak. You're not timed in a regular mass outbreak, or you've finished a massive mass outbreak, so there isn't a timer anymore. If you're planning on keeping the run anyways, it's really worth walking around and checking things, but you can also uh, find a lot of extra shinies by just not fast traveling. And I know that can seem tedious, but you see so many more Pokemon just flying straight over to the Pikachu or the, you know, wherever it is that you're trying to go. Uh, I end up finding a lot of shinies this way, just kind of flying through the map, taking my time. It doesn't always have to be a rush, right? You can just fly around and enjoy your time and you'll find all kinds of random shinies and other Pokemon that you might need if you're collecting alphas. So it's something that can really help your collection and help you just find shinies that you'd otherwise miss. I mean, on stream, I'll have a couple of clips here, but you can see these are shinies that I decided to just check around after finding other shinies, and I was planning on resetting, but uh, after taking a little peek around the corner, what did we find? <laughs> a shiny curly eye or just anything else, right? So it's definitely worth taking the time to just look around a little bit, because it'll definitely help with the shiny charm. Another tip that's especially useful for people like me who are trying to complete a shiny living dex or who are trying to catch kind of tough to find Pokemon, like anything that spawns out of a tree only, like a Burmy or a Wormadam, or anything that's in a space-time distortion, is to go the extra, extra mile and perfect the Pokedex entry for those types of things. It can be a bit of a burden to try to do it for everything, but for you know, Pokemon that are really rare or you don't see very often, it'll really help your chances. It'll get you from a 1 in 800 chance to like a 1 in 500 chance. So it really will help and it's something that will eventually save you a lot of time. The next thing I want to talk about is what you should be taking with you when you go out on a shiny hunt. This is what I take with me on a normal run out in Pokemon Legends. Uh, I only have a handful of items, but I'll go over why I have each of them. Smoke bombs are used just to give yourself some cover if there isn't a nice patch of grass or something like that to sneak up on some Pokemon. To be honest, I don't use them a ton, but they're nice if you really don't want to scare something away. Sticky globs are nice when the Pokemon are trying to attack you, but you don't want to have to battle them and deal with it. If you throw a sticky glob at a Pokemon, most of the times uh, it will stun the Pokemon and you can just throw an Ultra Ball at it and catch it and not have to deal with battling it. Jet Balls are something that you should always be carrying around with you. We'll talk a little bit more about how to get Jet Balls, uh, but the basic of it is, is it has a really high catch rate when you haven't been seen by the Pokemon yet. So if you're throwing these from the grass hidden and, you know, they're smaller Pokemon, you can catch a whole horde of Pokemon from a mass outbreak using these. And a lot of times you don't have to battle them, you don't have to run around. It just ends up being the most efficient way to catch Pokemon. Ultra Balls are nice to have just in case uh, you're seen and you can sticky glob to Ultra Ball. You can buy these really easy at the shop. So I always have a bunch of them with me too. Gigaton Balls are a little more niche, so these have a really high catch rate, but they obviously throw really, really slow, and they're hard to hit a Pokemon with. But, if you're in a battle with a Pokemon, you don't have to worry about any of that, and these have a really high catch rate. So, I keep these almost exclusively for when I have to battle a Pokemon and capture it. This is your best chance to catch a Pokemon uh, outside of, you know, just getting a back strike or something before battling them. But this is usually my go-to if I really want to catch something. I have each of the survival charms that you can buy over, over from the old lady over near the training grounds. And uh, these just help so that you don't die. I honestly bought these for the RCS fight and they're just in my backpack now just as a nice little safety net. They give you a little more health so that you don't die after a couple of attacks. You'll get four or five instead. Oran berries are nice because you can throw them and get a Pokemon to eat them. When a Pokemon is eating, they have a higher catch rate than they would be if you just 
threw a Pokeball at them when they hadn't noticed you. So this is a nice way to guarantee a catch of a Pokemon if you really, really need to get it and you don't want to risk it running away or something like that. So they're nice to have and they're really easy to get. Hopo Berries are just to restore PP for my attacks. Uh, it's just nice to have on hand all the time. The Aguav Berries are just four massive mass outbreaks so you can see which Pokemon are at each node. And revives and max potions explain themselves, you know, you need to be, bring back Pokemon sometimes and you need to heal them. So, that's pretty much what I have. Now in that same vein, let's talk about money generation. A lot of times people ask me how I get the money to just continually buy Jet Balls. Like I said before, you do get money from catching Pokemon and turning it into the Professor after doing an expedition. But that doesn't pay itself off, uh, so another way to kind of supplement the money that you get is when you get all of these Pokemon in the boxes, you will need to release them at some point, because you'll just end up with a whole bunch of things in the box that you don't need. When you release them, you get these grit items, and these are for raising the stats of your Pokemon, but after you've gotten pretty far into the game, you don't really need these anymore. You've used them on all of the Pokemon that you care about, and these are just kind of sitting in your box building up. I mean, you see I have almost 800 of a couple of them. So what you can do is you can sell these. You can sell Grit Rocks for 3,000, and you can sell Grit Pebbles for 800, and these end up becoming a pretty large amount of money after you build up some of them. And it's something that you get just from catching and releasing Pokemon. So this is something that you might want to check out if you're having some money troubles, and uh, it's a way to really help supplement the money that you get from just doing expeditions. The other big money generating item is nuggets. You get these from beating the sisters that are randomly placed on the maps. Uh, they can show up on any of the maps, all three of them, and battling them, they have one Pokemon, and after you beat them they drop three to five nuggets once you're in the end game. This can be 30 to 50,000 uh, Poke Dollars for each time you battle them. So it's really worth making sure that you're beating them whenever you find them on the map. They'll pay for your trip and your next trip if you beat them and get these nuggets from them and sell them. This is really how you start snowballing your money and get a whole bunch of resources if you really need it. Now that we talked about what I carry around with me, let's talk a little bit more about Jet Balls. Jet Balls can't be bought from the store directly but you can craft them. They take Apricorns, Sky Tumble Stones, and Iron Chunks. They'll end up costing you about 700 per Jet Ball, but this ends up paying itself off usually. You get paid for catching Pokemon, so when you turn all of that stuff in at the end of a, a map and at the end of an outbreak, you'll get a bunch of the money back, so a lot of times you'll be able to come back here and just refresh the Jet Balls that you use during that outbreak. I hope some of these tips help you guys out, and if you have any other questions, feel free to comment down below or check in on one of my live streams as well. I'd be happy to answer your questions there. Happy hunting!